Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Mind the Moment Thursday morning gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. This is a place that we invite experienced mindfulness instructors to speak with us about what mindfulness means to them and to discuss as a community how we can incorporate these practices into our daily lives. I'm Suzanne Rowe Palacino, and I am absolutely delighted to be back here with Tara Healy, founder and director of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare's mindfulness program. Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Suzanne. Good morning, everyone. Good to have you here. Nice to see everyone this morning. And oh. I know it's been, a, am sure, a busy week for folks as we prepare to be maybe off next week for a holiday. So we're happy to have you here and joining us. And uh, so this morning, as we always do, we will start off with a question. Tara has a question for us. And then um, she'll lead us in a guided practice and we'll have some time for discussion. So if you go to the bottom of your screen, open up the chat. And then um, when you open that up, you have an opportunity to turn on um, the drop down menu and turn on everyone, which um, is, will enable us to see everybody's comments as they come in. And we already have some comments this morning. And yeah, so we'll share some of the, um, the Facebook link um, that I mentioned last time. I will share that this morning. I'll get that in a minute. And that Facebook link, if, if you weren't here on Tuesday, is a link to the Living Well at Home Harvard Pilgrim Facebook page. And it's great, anyone, whether you're a Harvard Pilgrim subscriber or just a Harvard Pilgrim lover, <laughs> um, <laughs> you can uh, join that Facebook group. And it's there's all kinds of exercises and free um, programs that you can take full advantage of. So I, I will share that with uh, the group. And yeah, then, thanks, Suzanne. That's great because whether you're a subscriber or not, there are all kinds of programs to take advantage of um, at no cost. Absolutely, exercise programs, Zumba. I mean, nutrition, who, bar classes, Pilates. Uh, yes, hmm, yeah. I didn't know about the bar classes. I'm, I'm. That might be a, a interesting one. Yeah. So Web Thursday is actually the. That's a day where there's more fitness oriented. Um, so, and, th and things change. So I'm not sure if that series is over, but just it gives you a sense of historically what we've done and that Thursdays are more days of fitness. Yes, and they are live. I don't know if they're recorded, but they are, they are live for sure. Yeah, they post them on the YouTube, on the YouTube page. So yeah. Oh, great. And then um, Rizvana um, has mentioned is asking about whether there will be mindfulness next Thursday. There will not. So no, good question. We'll be, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, we will be back on that following Tuesday, though. So um, hoping everyone has a nice time off. So as uh, we continue on, Tara, I know, has a question for all of us that's um, intriguing. So what yeah, do well, um, and, you know, again, like Suzanne and I were kind of having a conversation about this this morning, that as we get ready to move into this holiday season, um, what are some of the things that you are most looking forward to? And that could be something you do solo, something you do with others. It could be uh, actually anything. So it's a very broad question. But as we approach this season, what are you most excited about? Like what it could be a, a particular type of food that is a tradition that you have or make or prepare or people that you spend with or time that you spend alone. Um, but anything as we move into this season that uh, feels like joyful or exciting to you in some way. And as always, while folks are getting their thoughts together, um, Suzanne, I want to start with you. Yeah, so this um, particular Thanksgiving, we usually just have just a small group because uh, my parents have, have passed, um, but my in-laws, um, my mother-in-law, we usually spend the day after Thanksgiving with her and with my um, sister-in-law and her family. So on Thanksgiving, it's usually a small, really small gathering, but my friend John is coming from New York and he's super silly. Um, 
and full of fun. So oh, that's great. Forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. So how about you, Tara? Um, you know what? I I get uh, one of the things that I love is um, that it really changes. There's I feel like energetically there's a shift in even culture that things slow down a bit. And um, I even find and, uh, and reading on different emails, let's connect after the holidays, let's do after. So it's like you're entering this time that is your own sort of precious downtime. And especially with Thanksgiving, um, you know, really calling to mind gratitude and that there's no gift giving. And so there is something, um, specifically about this particular holiday that I think is more surrounded by gratitude and um, just downtime, just a different, you know, just, just a shift. Um, I'd love to see, I know we have a busy chat here. Um, yeah, like time off and sleeping and baking. Um, my, I love someone says my mom's homemade Chex Mix. I love that. Oh, that is the best. That's so funny. My sister does that. And that yeah. is such a hit. I was like, does anybody else do this? But yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the food, time off. Yeah. Baking with my girls. Mm, I love I that. I love too. it. Time off um, from sleep. Singing carols. Yeah, time off from work. I, you know what? We don't have to have anything planned if we don't have to work. That is the key. And those, I mean, obviously those, I'm hoping, I, I find myself less apt to um, go to a store if it's open on Thanksgiving because I don't want it to oh, yeah. justify those to have to work. You know, I, I like yeah, to, yeah, yeah. it needs the day off. Yeah, it's, Pies, yeah. pies, 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 pies. Yes. And I love what you mentioned, Tara, about the no gift giving because, you know, uh, we, there's many of us that really don't need much. And, you know, if we can give to those that do, um, but even just the pressure of not having to, to worry about that is a nice yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. It, I, yeah, it's very much uh, a sharing, especially Thanksgiving, I think. And, you know, other holidays in this winter season, um, we can bring to it what we want, right? It doesn't even matter culturally. We can, we can shift traditions that no longer serve us or don't, you know, feel gratifying or inspiring and shift it up a bit. Um, so there's Earlier, nothing we that were... says we can't. Right. Earlier, Tara and I were talking about this as well. And uh, I think back to my family when I was a kid and we used to you know, have a big meal at two o'clock in the afternoon and then go for a walk, um, which, you know, is just a, a nice tradition to walk it off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and get ready for dessert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so thank you for all those comments. It, it, yeah. um, it's nice to see everybody's uh, what everybody's looking forward to. Yeah, so I thought that I would actually um, lead a body scan this morning and we'll end with a little bit of concentration or focus practice, but I wanted to, the main practice to be body scan because as we move into the holidays, there are of course some challenges. So we tend to be with people that might have different political or social views than we have. And um, there can be, times where we feel, feel provoked. And this is where working with the body comes in super handy so that we can see that provocation and actually kind of assimilate it within ourselves and then respond in ways that align with our values instead of reacting in ways that make us or lead us to regret, make us feel regretful or sorrowful. So that, you know, again, um, so I, I feel like uh, the body, working with the body is so important. So I just, I thought I would lead us in a body scan um, this morning. Uh, 
So with that in mind, you can do a standing practice or a seated, whatever feels like it's going to serve you best this morning. If you're sleepy, standing's great, eyes open. Um, otherwise, so just take a posture that best fits for you this morning. Eyes open or closed. So if they're open, gaze downward a bit uh, to remove peripheral distraction. And eyes closed. Fine, you know, your choice. Let's begin with two deep breaths on your own. Do a deep inhalation through the nose, double the length of the exhalation through the mouth. I find that a couple of deep breaths just help settle any surface tension from the activity of the day so far. Helps stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system to just tell the body that you're just gonna enter a time of settledness, non-distraction. And as you're seated or standing, just notice your body. Notice any pulsing or points of contact. Move from body now to the room that you're in or outside of the room and just become aware of sound, perhaps aware of temperature. And allowing sound to remain in the background to begin to bring the awareness back into the body. Whole body awareness. And bringing awareness to the very top of the head. So I'll be isolating various parts of the body along the way and just asking you to bring your conscious awareness to that particular piece of the body or part of the body and notice sensation or lack of sensation. Notice as we move through the body areas that you might be holding and see if you can soften and just to the degree that you're able. So the very top of the head, isolating this part of the body. And moving awareness along the sides of the head, including the ears and the back of the head. And bringing awareness now to the face. So the very top, the forehead, the eyes, the cheeks and nose, the mouth and jaw. See if you can soften the muscles of the face. So just releasing, softening, surrendering around the eyes and the jaw, especially let the tongue relax in the mouth and perhaps the tongue touching the roof of the mouth. Bringing awareness now to the neck. So the front and the sides and the back. And coming down to the shoulders. So releasing, surrendering, dropping the weight of the shoulders. Moving to the upper arms, elbows, forearms and hands. Perhaps aware of points of contact with the arms, hands, and body, softening, and noticing sensation or lack of sensation. And bringing awareness to the torso, so the front of the body and the back of the body.
And moving down over the hips and thighs. With these large muscle groups, aware of what's there. Sensation, perhaps with a point of contact or not. Lack of sensation. Releasing, surrendering, softening this part of the body. And moving to the knees, the lower legs, and the feet. Again, softening, surrendering, aware. No. Bringing curiosity to the sensations, to the feeling, or to the noticing that there is a lack of sensation. And releasing that. And bringing awareness now to the entire body, to the whole system. Aware of sensations in different parts of the body. What, what is making itself known to you at the level of sensation? And beginning now to narrow that focus to the sensations present when you breathe in and out. You just begin to notice where it's easiest for your awareness to track the sensations that you notice when you breathe in and that you notice when you breathe out. It could be the rise and fall of the abdomen. It could be the area around the chest or, or even the nostrils or something else. And if for any reason breath is challenging for you this morning, you could take the palms of your hands and rest them on the top of the thighs or on a table. And that point of contact could be what you're using to uh, stabilize attention to serve as an anchor. And sound is also uh, an option if that's available to you. So I'll be silent. You can just simply remember each time you notice that the mind has wandered, you can make a soft mental note thinking and return to whatever you're using to stabilize and anchor attention. Noticing where the mind is, reconnecting with your anchor.
And as we bring this meditation to a close, may we be peaceful and at ease. May our heart be soft and open. May we be safe and protected and our bodies healthy and strong. And may the merit and the goodness of our practice today be for the benefit of all beings everywhere. And I'll come back from three to one. So three, two, and one. We can, if your eyes were closed, allow the eyes to open and maybe take a minute to stretch. <clears throat> Thank you, Tara. Yeah. Interesting when you were mentioning about engaging sound. Um, my dog was snoring. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> so funny. I know it's so it's sweet, right? There, mm -hmm. yes, I know. It's so nice. Um, but would love to hear anybody that wants to share their experience in practice. But one of the um, again, I'll sort of reiterate one of the reasons I mentioned working with the body, and this is why this practice on a regular basis is so valuable because the body often knows before the mind and can alert us. So that we are, uh, you know, managing or working, working with probably is the better way to phrase it, our uh, provocation or reactivity, and then enabling us to speak and engage in ways that are in alignment that we care about that are that value other human beings that we may disagree with. Um, and you know, Suzanne and I were talking earlier, and um, I have one family member in particular where there's just a, a lot of disagreement kind of politically and socially. And, um, and yet I know that he is a caring and a kind and a good person just, and has had various hurts within his own lifetime along the way. And I think the practice can help us broaden our understanding of other human beings and their actions and to wonder, you know, up the curiosity around what might um, be behind some of these ideas. And, you know, um, it just, it really helps us, I think in many ways, love more easily and more fully and to have less regret regarding our relationships because we don't have to agree or feel one is right over the other. So the holidays bring with it the fun stuff we look forward to, but it's often coupled with challenges. Um, and so to be able to kind of hold both of those and work with those is really important. And I think sustain it's, sustaining you um, because it's easier to feel love and compassion and kindness than it is to feel anger and regret. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very timely and true. And like you mentioned, um, <laughs> like you mentioned, it's, um, it really is uh, our practice to yeah. when those folks provoke us that we can, you know, even just take that one breath that can give us um, time to discern an, a, a more skillful way to respond versus yeah. reacting. And uh, even just ask without internally, I wonder why, you know, I wonder where, I wonder how. You know, that just really like upping that sense of curiosity. And, um, you know, it's an opportunity to appreciate our shared humanity, you know, that none of us escape without, um, without loss and pain and difficulty and an aging body and aging family members and, uh, you know, illness. I mean, like these are universal things that as human beings, we all share regardless of your political and social views. And so, um, you know, this, 
these holidays that we're coming to give us an opportunity to practice, to really practice and to, to, to practice with humility. Yeah. So I yeah, welcome yeah. any thoughts or comments or um, <laughs> we need to send you to DC. <laughs> I love that point because I don't know, I, I was, I noticed in the news, there's a, a gentleman that I'm connected to, Tara, you might know him, Chris Ru Ruane. He's a, a British. Yes, journalist. yes, yes. He's, not, he's British, know. right? Yes. Yes, and yes. Um, part of the, I don't know if he's, he's got a connection with Parliament, but yes, they, um, there's an article about how he has brought mindfulness to Parliament and how there now, there was now, and I have to go back to the article, another um, activity that has brought that closer to um, being part of, of the, you know, the, bringing some of those trainings to the government in. Yes, in yeah. Um, and John Kabat-Zinn went, went to parliament as well. And um, Chris is amazing. I've, I've met him a few times at events that he's been speaking when we were able to be live. Um, and yeah. his, his, he's a remarkable human being. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of hope. There's lots of hope and opportunity and it starts with working with our own minds, you know, working with, working with ourselves because, you know, I, I don't know if I've said this before. I think I may have, but it's something that I say often that when I was first learning these practices that I, I realized that I was not just understanding the nature of my own mind. I was actually, what I was learning was I was understanding the nature of everybody's mind. The content and the stories are different, right? Because our life experiences and, you know, who our families are and like all of that is different. But I felt like I was walking around with this incredible secret, like, oh, this is just what minds do, you know? They judge and they plan and they worry and they feel fearful and, you know, all of these things and that there's a way to actually relate to the arisings in our mind that can, can give us intelligence in a very different kind of way. You know, it's different than a book smart intelligence um, so that we can then employ that wisdom compassion, kindness in the spirit of our lives and of making a difference on the planet. Yeah, I mean, that's the word. It's wisdom. Yeah. Um, many times we, we like to take in um, information to increase our intelligence and always, you know, reading, connecting and social media and right, right. really if the more we're, um, you know, the more we can bring in some of the silence we can, and this pauses within our, our discourse, I think the more, and the more we listen, the more we can understand. Right. It's so true. And listen to our own thoughts. Like sometimes it can be so, somewhat horrifying to see beliefs that we have, but there is, you know, there is such a benefit in seeing what arises. And you know, feeling the physicality of that. Uh, we don't also have to believe our thoughts. So that's, yeah. So yeah. I know we're at nine. I just, I want to wish everybody um, a wonderful holiday season. We won't see you next week, but but um, Tuesday there will be a session. I Who's the teacher on Tuesday? Jackie Johnson. Yay. Okay, great, great. I mean, I, I give a yay to all of our teachers because <laughs> I think they're a really incredible crew, but I'll be there on Tuesday morning and um, as a participant. And, uh, you know, just good luck with, with uh, all of the challenges and the beauty that this season brings and um, to remember self-care and rest and cut yourself slack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very, very wonderful reminders. And um, thank you so much for the, the practice that you guided, Tara. And, you know, it's really nice to have this discussion with, with the community and, and process the, the ups and the downs and mostly the, hopefully the ups of this lovely season. Yeah. So, 
um, yeah, we're, we're yes. happy to have everyone here and, and look forward to yes, seeing you. Yes, thank you, everyone. thank you. All right, we'll see you soon and happy, happy holiday to everyone. Take care.